welcome back after simcat 9 i'm here back with a few approaches let's begin with the question number 1 a uh, quite an easy question when do you say the values of the roots the roots lie in the interval the values of the roots is actually the value of the x so the values of the roots lie in the, in the interval minus 1 to 8 that means x lies in the interval minus 1 to 8 so what do we do simply put x is equal to minus 1 and x is equal to 8 our equation is x square minus kx minus 5 is equal to 0. Put x is equal to minus 1. So we have minus 1 square 1 minus k into minus 1 minus 5 is equal to 0. Which gives us, take k, k here is positive, minus minus becomes positive. So k, 1 minus 5 is minus 4 which goes into the right hand side becomes 4. k is equal to 4. Now this actually gives you an answer directly here. There is only one option which has 4 as a limit and of course it's a close limit we don't know whether 4 is an upper limit or lower limit right now but we know that 4 is one of the limits and we only have one option let's just understand the other option if we had started off with x is equal to 5 8 we would have got 64 minus 8k minus 5 is equal to 0 which gives us 59 is equal to 8k and k is equal to 59 by 8 and this is also a close limit. Now this is greater than 4. So this is the upper limit. 4 is the lower limit and 58, 9 by 8 is the upper limit. And your answer is option number A. Option A, the first option would have been your answer. A very interesting but an easy question from time speed distance. Looks like 7 lines, difficult to understand but not difficult. Three trains are aligned and they have the same length. They have the same length. Let's assume the first is the slowest, the second is the faster and the third is the fastest. Their lengths are all XXX. After some time, that is 60 seconds, which is also mentioned, let's assume that the slower train, the slowest train has moved a distance D. Let's say this distance is D. So the total distance here now, this becomes, let's say this is D. Let's say this is only D. Now the faster, the middle train has just crossed the slower train. So what is the distance moved, moved by the middle train? The distance traveled by the middle train here would become D plus X. And at that time, the fastest train is just overtaking the middle train. So this distance would become how much then? D plus 2x. That means we can say that the faster train has covered to a distance of 2x <clears throat> more than the slowest train in 60 seconds. And of course, this is at a relative speed, at some relative speed. The fastest train, the fastest train has covered 2x, a distance of 2x more than the slowest train in 60 seconds. And xx are their distances, remember? At their relative speed, at their relative speed, which, which you don't know right now. Now understand the question. The question says, what will be the time taken by the fastest train to cross the slowest train? And the definition also is explained clearly that from the instant the front end of the fastest train just crosses the rear end of the slowest train. This is exactly the crossing distance. So to cross the slowest train, the fastest train will have to cover its own length and the length of the slowest, which is again 2x. All the lengths are xx. So it has to cover 2x at the relative speed, which is already 60 seconds. We don't need to do anything. 60 seconds is directly the answer. To cross the fastest, to cross the slowest train, the faster train, the fastest train will have to cover a distance of 2x at the relative speed, which is already 60 seconds. So directly we can answer 60 seconds as the answer. 60 seconds. Okay, third question. 300 ice creams, 90 customers. 300 ice creams, 90. You can pose the question if you want to understand. 
300 ice creams have been bought. 90 customers are there. Every customer has to buy two flavors. So that's compulsory. So let everybody buy two flavors. Now I, we are left with 120 ice creams to be purchased. There are 90 customers. We want to maximize exactly three. We want to maximize it exactly three. So let all the 90 still purchase one more ice cream, one more flavor. So again, 90 flavors are purchased, 90 ice creams are purchased. We still are left with 30 ice creams. And all 90, at that situation is all 90 have are exactly three. Up till now, all 90 have purchased exactly three. If these 30 ice creams were not to be purchased, our answer would be 90. All 90 would be purchased, all three, or just exactly three varieties. But now we still are left with that surplus 30. There's a problem of surplus. 30 ice creams have still to be purchased and everybody can purchase only one more variety. There are total four flavors. Three have already been purchased. You can, every customer can now purchase one more only. So whoever 30 customers purchase these 30 ice creams, they will become exactly four. So we'll reduce 30 customers from the list of 90 customers. And our answer is 60. 60 customers will still be exactly three. So the correct answer is option C, 60. The third answer, the third option is the answer. A very simple approach. Moving on to the fourth question. I hope you remember your fundamentals. When milk and water are mixed in the ratio of 5 is to 2, the profit and SP is CP. We already told SP is equal to CP. Cost price. A milk vendor sells a mixture of milk water at the cost price. SP is equal to CP. At that time, 2 out of 5, that is the profit percent. 40%. The profit percent right now is 40 percent. After some time he mixes and the ratio becomes 5 is to 3. 5 is to 3. So 3 out of 5. The profit percent now becomes 60 percent. And we are not asked what is the per change, percentage change in, uh, what is the change in the percentage. We are trying to ask what is the percentage change in the percentage profit. We are not asked, this is not the percent point question. 40, 60, 20 percent. No, 20 percent is there in the option, but that's wrong. When 40 becomes 60, there's an increase of 20 percent. And as a percentage, we'll say 20 out of 40, 20 percent out of 40 percent, which is 50 percent. The profit percent has increased by 50 percent. The correct option is option B. 50 percent is the right answer. We are not looking for percent points. We are searching for percentage. Remember the sentence. Moving on to the ninth question. Ideally, this, such questions can be quite lengthy. They can be quite lengthy. But look, raise your observation scale. Look at the first point, 4, 3. Let's say this is the point 4, 3. The second point is 12, 3. The y coordinate is the same. This is the point 4, 3 and this is the point 12, 3. It's a horizontal line with a length of 8, 12 minus 4, 8. And look at the four, third point, 4, 9. This is 4, 3 and the third point is 4, 9. 4 is the same. X coordinate is the same. It's a vertical line, 4, 9. 9 minus 3, this is a length of 6. So this becomes a right angle triangle and that to a Pythagorean triplet like 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 10. The hypotenuse becomes 10. And in a right angle triangle, the hypotenuse is the circumdiameter. So 10 is the diameter. So obviously the radius, required radius would simply be 5. The correct answer is 5. The correct answer to be entered was 5. And this is the last question that I have selected for today. Looks complicated because there are A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D looks complicated for a moment. Let's consider a plus b as x and c plus d as y. So our equation becomes mod of x minus mod of y is greater than mod of mod of x minus y. 
x minus y, x minus y appears to be the same. That means this is a play of positive, negative. There are four cases. Positive, 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 negative, negative, positive, negative, negative. Now let's just try to put both x and y as positive. x is positive, y is positive. So what happens in this case? You simply say x minus y. The you open the modulus as it is. So x minus y will be greater than x minus y. No, this is wrong. x minus y cannot be greater. Mod x minus y cannot be greater than mod x minus y. They have to be equal. So let's try both as negative. Let's now try both as negative. This is the case positive, positive. Let's try negative, negative. When we say x is negative, we'll open x as x will simply be as it is. Modulus of y will be opened as minus. So we'll say minus of minus y is greater than modulus of x will now be opened as minus x and minus y. Remember, x is negative. We can actually take some values here if we are confused. Let's let's simply take a few values here. Let's take x as 5, minus 5, and y as minus 7. What happens? Your value becomes modulus of minus 5, minus, mod of minus 7 will be 7. So minus 7 is greater than x, mod x, mod x is now 5. Mod of minus 5 will be 5, minus y, which is minus 7. So this becomes minus 12, modulus, which becomes 12, is greater than 5 minus, minus 7. This is also 12. 12 is greater than 12. That becomes wrong. So up till now, what do we have? Both positive, both negative is not permitted. That does not satisfy the given condition. So we are now left with one positive, one negative. Let's try to put x as positive and y as negative. Let's take x as simply 5 and y as minus 7. So our center, our equation becomes mod, modulus of 5 minus 7. Minus 7 modulus will be plus 7. So minus 7 is greater than modulus of 5 is 5 minus minus 7. This gives us 5 minus 2 modulus 2 is greater than 12. This is wrong. So this is also wrong. The only case left now with us is x is negative, y is positive. Take x as minus 5 and y is simply 7 or 4 or whatever. So minus 5 minus 7 is minus 12 and the modulus becomes plus 12. On the right hand side, we'll have minus 5 modulus mod will become 5. Minus 7. 5 minus 7 is minus 2 and the modulus is plus 2. But 12 is greater than 2. So this is satisfied. So our case now becomes x is negative, y is positive. a plus b is less than 0. c plus d is greater than 0. Now, ideally speaking, option 1 and option 3 are almost universally correct. Option 2 becomes wrong because C plus D is positive. Modulus of positive is always equal to positive, not greater than positive. Now, modulus of A plus B will always be positive, but A plus B is already negative. So, positive is always greater than negative, and this is the true statement. So, the required answer to be answered here for this test was option D. Ideally, option A and option C also become universally true. We cannot deny that they are wrong. But the required intention of the question was option D. Option D is correct. Okay. So that's it for today. Continue working hard and stay safe. Stay safe and work hard. Goodbye for today.